Is decluttering a job for just one person or do you have to take into account somebody else? There are many situations where you have to take into account other people. To start with, most of us don't live on our own. We have families, we have partners, so decluttering would automatically involve other people. But that's not the subject I want to talk about today. That's one for a later video. Today, I would like to talk about things that linger. And that linger for a very particular reason. Because you are keeping them for someone else. Those could be things like your kids' drawings, where you think, well, maybe when they grow up, they want to see those. Or heirlooms. Imagine your parents have passed away and all the siblings, you and your two sisters, have decided that it's going to stay in your garage. And they may or may not have expressed interest to take some of them in. But for you, the situation would be that all the heirlooms of your parents are sitting in your garage and you are the keeper of their memories. If that's not pressure, well, you'll have to look far and wide to find more pressure than being the keeper of the memories. Let's say you've already kept those things in the garage for 10 years. For one thing, they won't get any better by sitting in the garage. The second thing is that if your siblings have expressed interest in taking some of those things away, then why haven't they? Why are you keeping things for them? The real important thing to do at some point, and I would suggest not to wait for 10 years, but to do it faster rather than later, is to tell them to pick the stuff up and give them an ultimatum and simply say, I say simply, it's not as simple as that, but, and tell them, yes, by that date, I give you four weeks to come and pick up the things that you said you wanted because I need that space for myself. If you do need the space or not, doesn't really matter. They need to be under the impression that they have a time limit to make a decision. Why is that important? Because either way, after four weeks, you know that whichever reason you have to keep something is yours. You don't have to take into account that they might want it because they have clearly not expressed any interest in it. So it's up to you to decide, do I want it? What you're doing with that ultimatum is not putting pressure on your siblings. It's making sure that you can find out the reasons why those things are still there. You can exclude one particular reason, namely, my siblings want to have this, or my kids want to have this. If nobody says they do, then the only reason to keep it is here. It's yours. So that would give you an opportunity to actually sit down, look at the stuff and say, okay, this I might need, this I might want to keep, but all of that, I don't really care that much about. So there is an opportunity to let go. And the opportunity is created by taking away the ambivalence of the reasoning why it's still there. And that's what decluttering is often about, taking away the false reasons or chipping away at the diverse reasons why something is still there and deciding, well, this is not the reason why I'm keeping it. So why is it? And narrowing down the reasons to a point where you come to a clear yes-no decision, where you can say, okay, I really can't think of any reason why I want to keep this. And then letting go. Because at that point, you're in a place where you can say with confidence, I don't need this. I don't want this. And then you don't have any remorse when you let it go. It's a long-winded process, yes, but once you've gone through it, it'll become easier for the next item and the next and the next. And you'll find that progress is made that way. I hope that's useful. Stay clutter aware and come back next time.
If you want more, there are options. Click the round logo to subscribe to this channel or select the playlist in the middle to see more content or check out the links in the description below. Oh, and feel free to like this video.